What is going on? I think we've forgotten who we are as a country. We're Americans. You understand that or not? Say, we're Americans. We believe in Jesus Christ. That's who, that's our foundation. That's where we come from. We believe in God. We trust. That's what it says on our money. We talked about it last week. We're different. We're different. We're different. We're a Christian nation. Regardless of what somebody says, they're just smoking something when they say that we're not. It's crazy. We are a Christian nation. We are a Christian nation. All across America today, all across America, the average church is less than 75 in America. The average church size is less than 75 all throughout this country today. Preachers are standing up preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. We are a Christian nation. You hear me, yes or no? You ought to thank God that's where you live. I'm telling you that right now. That's who we are. So, but, and we're different. So we're a Christian nation, but we're also founded on a creed. We're founded on a creed. No other country is founded on a creed. We're founded on the Declaration of Independence. Amen? And we hold these truths to be self-evident. That all men are created what? Equal, endowed by their Creator with certain what? Unalienable rights. So right there in our declaration, we believe in the sovereignty of Almighty God. This nation came to be because of God Almighty. We've forgotten where we came from. Amen? So, we're going to go with another message today and let's see what we can find. Amen? There we go. I love that. I tell you what, Roger does all my graphics been working with me for 15 years now. Can we thank the Lord for Roger back there sitting there running everything? Amen, buddy. I love you. I'm going to tell you something right now. When I throw Roger a message on America, you don't have to worry about him getting all over it. Amen. He loves this country. I'll tell you that right now. I love that right there. Don't you love that right there? I've never seen that. The daddy with the daughter on the shoulders with the flag over the back. Amen. Come on. Freedom, the title of my message today, freedom, say it with me, requires doing. Can we do that again? We're sounding weak. Come on. Freedom requires doing. It saddens me, obviously, to see a shooting like happened in Parkland, right across the other way of Florida. Could have easily been right here. Obviously, that, that tears at me and hurts. And I hurt for them, especially with my own mother being shot. It, it's just a terrible thing. But it saddens me when people offer prayers. And so many of the people that were shot, the victims' families, politicians, they're, they're, they're saying, keep your prayers. It saddens me when we say keep your prayers, we're going to put our trust in politicians. You hear me, yes or no? And that's the thing. We just need to do something. We need to do something. We need to do something. Yeah, we need to do something. And we're doing it today with this message. You hear me? This is what America needs. Not, not that I'm some great genius. This is, you'll see. Freedom requires doing right. Freedom, if we'll just take everything that somebody can use to hurt somebody away from them, there will not be any evil anymore in the world. That is so much bull, it ain't even funny. People will find a chair to hit somebody with. They'll find anything. You know that as well as I do. People been killing Cain and Abel. Boom, what do you have? Say, right out the gate, right out the gate. We're a wicked and an evil people is what we are. That's who we are at our core. But I'm good. I don't need Jesus. You are a fool. You need the Lord. You are messed up. You might think you're all that. Spend a little time with me after church today if you'd like to. I'll probably find some sin in your life. Take the challenge. Yeah. I'm not saying you're not better than me. You probably are better than me. But guys, we're not better than Him. He's holy, holy, holy. We ain't, ain't, ain't. Amen? So what does our country need? Well, let's look. Jesus says you shall know the truth. And the truth shall make you free. The truth. The truth of the Gospel. There's one God. He had one Son. His name's Jesus. That's the truth. Anything else is a lie. 
Jesus said, anybody comes any other way, he's the same as a thief and a robber. Depart from me, you that work iniquity. Say it with me. I never knew you. But I was good. I did this, that, and the other. I, I had this religion. I had this clearly spelled out in the Scriptures. I never knew you. You can spend things any way you want, but for God to take His only Son, give Him to us, have Him brutally butchered on a cross, raise Him from the dead for you to be saved, but for you to say, oh, I'm good, I, I believe this other religion. If that was your Son you gave, you wouldn't feel the same way, would you? Say, that's the, deal. that's the deal. If you know the truth, the truth will set you free. If the Son therefore shall make you what? You should be what? That's the message America needs. We need people across this country to put their faith and trust in Jesus Christ. We need people across this country to realize they're sinners. They need a book called the Bible to help them live. Where did I learn how not to pop people in the mouth? Because that's what I did when I was young. Right enough for me to pop somebody in the head. Gary, you ain't supposed to do that. Okay. How did I learn to love my wife and be faithful as a husband? How did I learn to be a decent father from the Scriptures? You hear me, yes or no? And if we had something passed down to us, guys, even if you didn't read the Bible and you were a good husband, good wife, probably somebody in your family taught you how to do that. You understand, yes or no? And that all comes back to the Lord. We need this. We need the Lord. So, keep looking. America is free because America is good. America is free because of the virtue and moral values of its citizens. These values and morals are rooted and grounded in God's Word, the Bible. Specifically, the Ten Commandments. As more and more of American citizens cease to be good, the freedoms in America will erode and diminish and will ultimately be dissolved. What famous person said that? I did. I'm just wanting to say that to you, okay? I'm just saying that to you. You were looking for John Adams or George Washington. I know you were. I know you were. I'm just keeping you on your guard. Oh, I believe that with all my heart. I believe that with all my heart. As we're told, you don't matter. You're a piece of crap. You came from nowhere and you're going nowhere. And we kick God out of schools and out of every other public place. And you can't go to public, you know, political places and say, in Jesus' name, well, then don't invite me. America is a mess, morally. Okay? And that's our problem. But what do I know, right? What do I know? You're just, a, you know, from Rockingham, a podunk guy that don't even speak good English. It's okay. It's okay. I got some backups. <laughs> we have no government armed with power capable of contending with human passions, unbridled by morality and religion, avarice, ambition, revenge, or gallantry, would break the strongest cords of our Constitution as a whale goes through a net. Our Constitution was made only for a moral and religious people. It is wholly inadequate for the government of any other people. Who said it? Oh, there he is, John Adams. Amen. Praise the Lord for John Adams. Come on. America won't work if America is not moral. America won't work if we don't respect life. It won't work. And we've been watching the test tube experiment for about 50, 60 years. And it is a disaster. Take God out. It's funny how God's kicked out of public schools, public life. Seemingly. But he's the first one we point the finger at and blame. We've staked the future of all our political institutions upon the capacity of mankind for self government upon the capacity of each and all of us to govern ourselves to control ourselves to, to sustain ourselves according and here it is again to the what ten commandments of God it's really funny I've looked at most of a lot of the uh, not all of them but a lot of uh, government documents and I don't see any of them pointing to the Quran I'm just saying 
You understand? Freedom of religion. People can run their mouth all day long. This country was founded on the Bible and the Ten Commandments. It's flat out a fact. Our laws, that's where they come from. Come on. Come on, man. Who said that? Well, look at that. Another founding father and the fourth president of the United States. I'm about wore out from hearing from people who weren't there. When we can read, we have the internet now. You can put in James Madison in America and Ten Commandments, and I bet you'll find a lot of stuff he said. But we still want to be dumb or push an agenda that's not good for America. Neither the wisest constitution nor the wisest laws will secure the liberty and happiness of a people whose manners are universally corrupt. He, therefore, is the truest friend of liberty of his country, who tries most to promote its virtue, and who, so far as his power and influence extend, will not suffer a man to be chosen onto any office of power and trust who is not a wise and a virtuous man. That's what our founders taught us. Who said that? Samuel Adams. And that's what we've done. We have people leading us with no character, no moral fortitude, okay? I'm going to tell you something right now. I'm just being honest with you today. You might not like me. It's okay. You know, it happens. But uh, President Trump is the first president I, tr I prayed for. Really. I mean, you know, I think a lot of us preachers and Christians, oh, yeah, we pray for our leaders over us because Romans 13 tells us to. But I'm talking about being honest. Because I think the man needs prayer. As, as flat out clear as I can see, a man needs prayer. That man needs prayer. Amen? That's not, the, yeah, that's the truth. That's the truth. That's not to say that I don't agree with most of his policies. I do. But, but that's, that man needs some prayer. If he doesn't know the Lord, he needs to find the Lord. And that's my prayer. My prayer that God will help that man. God's the one who raises up and he takes down. But I'm praying, I'm praying, I'm praying. You know, not just God bless President Trump. God help President Trump do the right thing. Amen, yes or no, say. Amen, that's my prayer. I'm not just blind as a bat. Oh, you a Trump man, you a Trump man. No, I do agree with most of the policies. That's me, because I'm a conservative, that's who I am. But do I agree with that craziness he's done in his life, in his past life? Absolutely not. It makes me sick to my stomach. I can't stand people who cheat on their wife. You hear me say, you are him. Amen. Or whatever. But I'm going to tell you what. He is the first president I prayed for. And I'm praying for him right now. Amen. And I'm praying that right there, if we don't have somebody. Look at that line right there on the top. Look at that. Bad men cannot make good citizens. It is when a people forget God, and that's the good thing that I'm hearing out of our president. Whether he knows about it, it's true, I can't tell you all that, but at least he's not forgetting God. Are you hearing me, yes or no? He's not. I mean, I hear it. I'm listening. I'm trying to see. But not just a little donut he's going to throw me or something like that. I'm sorry I'm getting off track here, but I'm not looking for a cookie from a politician because they say God and all of a sudden we fall down at their feet. Are you kidding me? But I'm going to tell you, we need to pray for our leaders that they remember God. They remember where this country came from. Are y'all hearing me today? It's a little strong. Are y'all doing all right so far? Say, I ain't seen many run out yet, but it could happen. <laughs> bad men can't make good, good citizens. I'll be a good citizen, but I'm a bad man. You are not. You're a pitiful citizen if you're a bad person. Not saying we haven't all seen, but we, I think we know what we're talking about. It's when a people forget God that tyrants forge their chains. A vitiated state of morals, a corrupted public conscience is incompatible with freedom. It won't work. No free government or the blessings of liberty can be preserved to any people but by a firm adherence to justice, moderation, temperance. You know what that word is? Self-control. Look at that word. That's an evil word in Washington. Frugality. 
Won't work? Spinning like a crazy fool. That's what, this, that's what whoever this is said. You're going to find out who it is. And virtue. And by a frequent recurrence to what? A frequent recurrence to what? Guess what we're doing today? We have an, an, a frequent occurrence to what? That's who we are as America. That's what we need to hear. No, push it out. Let's don't teach this in our public schools. We are crazy people. We ought to be teaching this, quoting this, reading this. This is who we are. We're Americans. If we want to stay free, who said this? Patrick Henry. Oh, what does Patrick Henry know? Well, all he knew was give me liberty or give me death, and you didn't do nothing hardly. Amen? Say Amen, yes or no? <laughs> Come on, man. We need to listen to people like this. Public virtue cannot exist in a nation without private virtue. Say that with me. Public virtue cannot exist in a nation without private virtue. Keep going. And public virtue is the only foundation of republics. Who crazy said that? John Adams again. You know John Adams, pretty smart fellow. I think you know what he's talking about. We don't just need public virtue. Ooh, look how good I am. I have morals. Look at me. Vote for me. We need it at the house. We need it in your workplace with your children. Amen? We're talking about the, the matter of America today and what to do. And Is it God or politicians that's going to fix things? Is it self-government or more gun control? Well, a lot of people say, well, it's both. Well, I'm here to tell you right now, it's God. And it's us turning to the Lord, and it's us governing ourselves. All that's necessary for evil to triumph, say it with me, is for good men to do. Edmund Burke, British House of Commons. And it's not just rising up and, you know, taking over the government. No, 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 no. This is what, what's going to kill America and it's killing us when, when good men do nothing. We stay silent. We shut our mouth about the salt and light that we're supposed to be in our country for Jesus. And we just, you know, go to sleep, it'll all be better. Ba -da 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 -da. We're important to America, living for the Lord. You hear me, yes or no? Loving Jesus and loving people is, is, is a patriotic thing to do, baby. I'm telling you that right now. It's a big deal. In France, I almost always had seen the spirit of religion and the spirit of freedom marching in opposite directions. Religion against freedom. Say that last part with me. But in America, I found that religion and freedom were intimately what? But now, shut up. Keep it in the church. We're in trouble. Alex de Tocqueville. I probably butchered his name. But we've forgotten God. We've forgotten God. What crazy person said that? We have vainly imagined in the deceitfulness of our hearts that all these blessings in America were produced by some superior wisdom of our own. What nut would have said that? Abraham Lincoln. Are you hearing today? So, freedom requires doing right. I have a few minutes left. You might say, he's given a lot of quotes but not a lot of Bible. Well, they sure supported a lot of the Bible truth with their words. But we got some Bible rolling at you now. Say that verse with me out loud if you don't mind. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their plan. Let's just have a little schooling on one of the greatest verses for our country in the Bible. Written to Israel, but it's written to us. It's written to anybody who wants to be free, put their faith in the Lord, and to do the right thing. 
So here it is, if. If my people. Let's just break it down quickly. Say that with me. I belong to God. How much different would America be if our young people and our older people knew that they belonged to God? That I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. I'm not a pile of junk and crap. I didn't come from some explosion. I'm not slime. I'm made in the image of Almighty God, and I put my faith in His Son. I belong to God. Would it be a different world we live in? Yes or no? Yes or no? Quite frankly, not to say America was ever a perfect nation. We never were. But I'm going to tell you what, a lot of you have lived long enough. Old as my mother, some of you, even older, a little bit younger than my mama. But listen, you grew up in a day when a lot of this was the way it was. What happened? What happened? I've done a little bit of study, again, not that I'm the brightest bulb, but two things I've seen. A big Supreme Court decision back in the late 40s and another one with taking prayer out of our public schools. There was more than just that. There was a whole mindset that took place in our country. Yeah, and in saying separation of church and state, which is craziness. It's not, that's not what it means at all. In some letter, now we use it as, our, you know, craziness, okay? The fact of the matter is, wouldn't we be different if my people, I belong to God. Say that with me. Then don't act like a fool. Don't do things that you shouldn't be doing. Why? Say it with me, because I what? I belong to God. If my people which are called by my name, say that with me. I am in Christ. Are you a believer? If you're a believer in Jesus Christ, if you put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ, you are in Christ. I am sealed by the Holy Spirit. My name is written in the Lamb's book of life. God loves me. I am somebody. I am in Jesus Christ. Amen? If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves. Just walking through the verse real quick. Shall humble themselves. If what? If what? I humble myself. I humble myself. What does the word humble mean? It means to be under. I live in a world today where everybody wants to be over. So God will not lift you up unless you put yourself, I mean, lay yourself down at his feet. I ain't saying put yourself down. I'm no good. I'm a dog. I'm nobody. No. He's God and I'm not. I matter, but so do you. Humble yourself like that before the Lord. Be thankful and grateful. He's my Lord. Say that with me. I humble myself. He's my Lord. He's my head. He's my God. One more time. He's my Lord. He's my head. He's my God. It ain't all about me. People matter. I matter. The truth matters. Doing right matters. Humble yourself. I willingly put myself under his hand, and I put myself under his authority. This is what we need for freedom in this country, that we put ourselves under him, under his authority, under his hand. What you say is right. That's why we put it on all of the government buildings. You, 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 it would be a disaster. If we took Scripture off of government buildings, it would look like a destruction happened in Washington, D.C. If they took chisels and started chiseling things of Scripture away out of all our buildings, it would look like something happened, an earthquake happened. Scripture's all over the place. Washington Monument couldn't even go up the steps. It had a leak in the roof because on the top it says, Praise be the Lord. Y'all hear me or not? So I humble myself. That's what we need. That's what you need. That's what I need, to be humble. I'm not above you, guys. I'm not above you. We put preachers up here. That is crazy. If anything, I'm to be lower than you. <laughs> I'm to serve you and to love you and to help you. Amen. But guess what? You are too. Humble yourself and pray. If my people, which you call by name, shall humble themselves and pray and pray. If what? If what? I pray. Prayer is what? I thought it was just giving a flowery speech so people could hear me. No. When you humble yourself, prayer, the language of prayer is, is humility in action. I can't do it all. I can't make it. I need you, Lord. My family needs you. Our town needs you. I need strength just to get out of bed today. <laughs> Amen. Say, prayer, humility, and action.
prayer, I see my inability and I recognize God's what? Prayer. If my people humble themselves and pray, the Bible says be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer, supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. Pray. So I pray. So if my people, I belong to God, I'm in Christ. Which are called by my name shall humble themselves. I put myself under his authority, under his hand. I'm not the big dog. Y'all hear me? He's God, I'm not. And pray, pray. Prayer is my humility in action, crying out to the Lord. I need you. I need you. We as a country need you. Amen. And seek God's face. If my people which call my name, my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face. What does that mean? Seek my face. If I what? I seek God's face. The idea is, say it with me, to do what? Does God matter to you? I would say he does. Many of you, I see you on a regular basis. You come here. I see my buddy John down front, not wanting any horn tooting, I know, but he, he cares enough to study two different things in a week. Doesn't get paid a dime to study God's Word because you have a desire to and you care about the men, don't you, and the people in the other groups. That's what America needs. Did you hear me? People of us who care. We care about the Lord. We care about His Word. It's a desire that we have. Are y'all hearing me or not? Yes. Church, unfortunately, has become something we just check off. I'm good. I can't, I can't change everybody. I know that. But I want this to be exciting for you. I, I want the first day of the week to really matter to you. You hear me say. And a lot of you tell me that. This is your best day of the week. How many would say that? Sunday's the best. You don't have to don't lie to me. But how many say, boy, Sunday's the best day of my week? I mean, get up, going to church, worshiping the Lord. That's what we need in this country. You hear me? And you that can't raise your hand and say that, you need to say, Lord, give me that desire where you matter to me more. I want that. Yeah, praise the Lord. Come on, I want that in my life. It's not going to happen by osmosis. That's what we need. It's a strong passion to seek the Lord. I'm not talking about flopping like a chicken, acting like a crazy person, writing your check, giving all your money away. I ain't talking about any of that. I'm talking about a strong passion to seek the Lord and His holiness and righteousness and doing the right thing and falling in love with Him so that you'll fall in love with other people and fall in love with your wife and fall in love with your children. Passion, man. With my whole heart, I've sought you. Oh, let me not wander from your commandments. Thy word have I hid in, in my heart, Lord, that I won't sin against you. You matter to me. I want to do the right thing, so I'll seek God's face. If my people, which you call by my name, chum themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked way. Freedom won't work unless we turn from our wicked way. Did you hear me or not? We'll make another law. Have y'all noticed lawbreakers break law? Is that just me noticing this? We'll make another law so they won't break the law. Fool, they don't break the law. We'll get more cops. I, I don't mind that. But I sure would prefer this. Wouldn't it be something if that fellow that shot those 17, or well, murdered those 17, shot more? Wouldn't it be something if he would have turned from his wicked ways? It's just not that easy to turn from your wicked ways. Let's keep looking. I turn from my wicked ways. Say that with me. It's all been a... One more time. It's all. What do I, what I mean, preacher? Oh, that boy just needs to turn from his wicked ways. Say, that's right. Well, excuse me. If my people, I belong to God. 
which are called by my name, I'm in Christ, shall humble themselves, put themselves under the authority of God, the hand of God, and pray, seek God's face with a strong desire, that's when you can turn from your wicked ways. Did I lose any of you on that or not? Guys, there's no magic wand. We can just, whoop, there you go, everybody, turn the wicked ways. There's a big if right there. See how that big if is right there? America hangs on that big if. Maybe we can scare enough young people. Being just young people killing people. Number one killer in this country is probably domestic violence. Most of them are husbands or boyfriends. Who knows? We got a mess. There's a big if. And we just can't say, turn from your wicked ways and make it happen. Or scare the crap out of them with a new law. Here's a new law. If it's that easy, I don't believe there'd be no 2 Chronicles 7, 14 in the Bible. You hear me? Yes or no? Say. It's going to take us some work. It's all been a progression. I humble myself. God's authority. I pray. God's ability. I seek. That's God's will. So God's authority, God's ability, and God's will. God's authority, God's ability, and God's will. Oh, no, I'll just go ahead and turn from my wicked ways. I don't think so. I don't think so. Unless you see yourself under God's authority and that you can do this with God's ability and that this is God's will because it's God's word, I doubt very seriously you're going to stick with it. That makes sense? The word turn is the word what? But they'll run preachers off in certain churches if you even say that word these days. Yeah, repent from your sin, you sinners. Can't believe it. Preacher called me a sinner. Well, you are. And we need to turn from it. Amen or oh me? How many would say, God help me to turn from things in my life because I was horrible? Can I see some hands? I was horrible. So maybe that'll make you feel better now. I turn. Following the progression enables me to see clearer my path of destruction and my error. That's the point. Self-government. We have to control ourselves, but we must have God. Another law thrown at something. And I know I'll probably take some feedback for this. I don't care. The bottom line is another law is not going to get people to turn to the Lord. We need Jesus Christ. That's what we need. We need him. Hello, light going on, flashing hell. I'm over here, God says. But you keep putting your trust in politicians. Oh, by the way, I'm ugly today. Correct me if I'm wrong, but it was stupid politicians, and I use the word stupid on purpose, that said if we have daylight savings time, the crops will get one more hour of sunshine. <laughs> I could be wrong, but I advise you Google that. I didn't, I didn't, but I'm pretty sure I'm right on that. But if I'm wrong, I'll apologize next Sunday. <laughs> pretty sure it wouldn't surprise me. Here we go. For you that don't know, that think that there is more sunshine now, there's not really. It's just a clock. Okay. <laughs> Here we go. For I acknowledge my transgression, my sin is ever before me. I'm quitting. Don't run out on me. Here we go. Against thee and thee only have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight, that thou mightest be justified. This is how we repent to the Lord. And you be clear when you judge me. Repentance is necessary. I turn from my wicked way. Say that with me. Create in me a what? A clean heart. Oh, God, and renew what kind of spirit in me? A right spirit. Because, man, I messed up. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. Uphold me with your free spirit. Free spirit. So I see it. I own it. I turn away from it. I follow God's path. Say that with me. I see it. I own it. I turn away from it. You think you're going to do that without the progression that was before it? 
fat chance. That's a lot of work right there. You need him. I need him. I turn from my wicked ways. That's what our country needs. That's what we as a church needs. If my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, God will hear. We've got to fly. God will forgive. God will heal. Then will I hear from heaven. You, are you kidding me? That's it? You mean if I acknowledge you, that yeah, I belong to you, I'm in Christ, I'm not playing games. You mean if I do that and I, and I, and I humble myself and I, and I pray to you, and I seek your face, and I turn from the mess in my life, you mean that's what he means? How many would say, and you're, you're bragging on the Lord, that's what he helped me do in my life. Let me see some hands. That's what he helped me do in my life. He helped me do this in my life. Well, it won't work for America. Last time I checked, America is full of Americans. <laughs> Amen. Say. The more, that's why the best thing you can do for this country is get your tail out of bed and come to church on a Sunday morning that preaches the gospel and hear the message of God. You can do this at Bible study. I get that, but that's what we also promote and want to do so that you can start to hear God's word grow and change for the good, not the bad. If you're going to a church where it's making you worse, don't go there. Amen. Say, come on. Here we go. We hold these truths to be self-evident. That all men are created equal. That they're endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights. That among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. The declaration ends with a firm reliance on the protection of divine providence. That's God Almighty who's sovereign. We mutually pledge to each other our lives our fortunes. And look at that word right there. And our what? Did it say sinful honor? Did it say wicked honor? Sacred honor. That's who we are. Two more quotes that I'm quitting. How many feel like you've been run over by a bus today? <laughs> the America bus. <laughs> History fails to record a single precedent. Not one. In which nations subject to moral decay have not passed into political and economic decline. What nut said that? General Douglas MacArthur. I wouldn't call him a nut, would you? If we ever forget that we are one nation under God, then we will be a nation gone under. Amen. Who said that? Ronald Reagan. Amen. <laughs> what is he now? Amen. So, Jesus says you shall know the truth, and you know the truth, guys. Am I a know-it-all, a smarty pants? Smarty pants, yes. <laughs> no, no. Everything I put on the screen today, most of it, good solid quotes from American history and founding fathers, and one scripture that is a real capstone, I think, for our freedom, that we, if we want to keep our freedom in our country. Second Chronicles 7, 14. Not too, too many people would argue with me on that. And Jesus said this, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. We've told you the truth today. This is what will make America free and keep America free. That's why our forefathers came here in the first place. They, they want to just do away with that. That's, that's, that's horrible. It's the truth. They came here to be free, to put their faith and trust in Jesus Christ. Would you say the title one more time? Freedom requires doing right. One more time. Freedom requires doing right. Let's work to make this part of America the best part of America. Let's you and me do right. Do right to one another. Do right, obviously, before the Lord. Do right to our husbands, our wives, our children. Do right to the lady that serves us our meal at the restaurant, at the Publix, at the McDonald's, <laughs> at the hardware store, 
at the Home Depot. Let's be the salt and light that God has called us to be. And let's make this the best part of America. We can start, what can we do? We can start right here. Let's be, let's be the church of Jesus Christ right here. Amen. And we're not alone. There's many other churches that love Jesus, that love the Lord, that believe in Jesus Christ. And us together, we're strong. Are you hearing me? So this requires, this is what freedom requires. Let's just thank the Lord one more time that we live in America. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Woo! Amen. Fellowship meets every Sunday morning on our beautiful 15 and a half acre campus in the Bullseye of Rotunda, West Florida at 140 Rotunda Boulevard West. Early worship begins at 8.30 a.m. with our morning worship service beginning at 10.30 a.m. Between these two services, we offer gourmet coffee, fresh juices, pastries, and lots of fellowship free of charge in our hospitality center. If you are looking for a church in the Inglewood area or would just like to pay us a visit, we would love to fellowship with you. For more information, give us a call at 941-475-7447 or log on to fcinglewood.com. For Pastor Gary Clark and all of us at Fellowship, God bless you.